Welcome to Electron Line. Here we have a second case in which an object can be floating in a multi-layer substance or a multi-layer liquid. Notice in this case the entire object is below the top surface but nevertheless it doesn't sink to the bottom because of the different densities between the two layers. We do have the weight of the object pulling down due to gravity, so we have the mg but we have the buoyancy force offered up by the first layer. We'll call it buoyancy force one. And we have a second buoyancy force, buoyancy force two, caused by the portion of the object being suspended or beneath the surface in the second layer. We do know that the total buoyancy force must equal the weight of the object or the weight of the object will simply sink to the bottom. So we can say here that the weight of the object mg of the object is equal to the total buoyancy force which is simply equal to the sum of the two buoyancy forces bf1 and bf2 caused by the weight of the displaced liquid in each layer remember the definition of buoyancy force is that it's equal to the weight of the displaced liquid which is equal to the mg of the liquid, weight is equal to the mass times acceleration due to gravity, and the mass can be written in terms of the density and the volume, so this is equal to the density times the volume times g of the liquid. Now in this case, since there's two of them, we can say that the total buoyancy force, which is equal to the sum of the two individual buoyancy forces, can now be written as the density of liquid 1, times the volume of liquid 1 times g plus the density of liquid 2 times the volume of liquid 2 times g. And again, the volumes of 1 and 2 are simply the amount of liquid that was displaced by the object in layer 1 and in layer 2. So we can write that as the density of liquid 1 times the volume of 1, which would be the cross-sectional area, L squared, times x, the depth in layer 1 times g plus the density of layer 2 times L squared y which is the amount of the volume inside the liquid 2 times g and that would be the total buoyancy force which must equal to the weight of the object. Now notice that we claim that we know the mass of the object and the density of the object and we know the volume of the object the volume of the object would be L squared times H. So what we could do is we could write the mass in terms of the density and the volume. So in other words, the mg could be written as the density of the object times the volume of the object times g. And in this case, that would be the density of the object times the volume L squared H times g. And we know that this must equal that. So let's send them equal to one another. We can then write that density of the object times L square H times G is equal to density 1 times L square X times G plus density 2 times L square Y times G. And then we can see that the G's cancel out and the L squares cancel out. And now, what if we want to solve this for x? All right, if we want to solve this for x, we need to get rid of the y. And the y can be written as h minus x. So now we have the density of the object times h equals the density of layer 1 times x plus the density of layer 2 times, and instead of y, we write h minus x. And now we're going to solve this equation for x. Let's see what we get. So we have to get rid of the parentheses. The density of the object times h is equal to the density of layer 1 times x plus the density 2 times h minus the density 2 times x. I cannot move this to the other side and factor out an h on the left side and factor out an x on the right side, which means that I have h times density of the object and then moving this to the left side, this becomes minus density of layer 2 is equal to, on the right side, we can factor out an x, 
and we have left density 1 minus density 2. And solving this for x, I get x is equal to h times the ratio of density of the object. I'll write this obj there for object minus density 2 divided by density 1 minus density 2. And there we have an expression that tells us how much of object of the object is in layer 1. And it depends upon the height of the object and the density of the object, the density of layer 2, and the density of layer 1. We can do the same, but instead of solving for x, we could have solved for y. So we can take the same equation here, and instead of x, we're going to write h minus y and see what we get. So then with this equation, we can write that the density of the object times h is equal to density 1 times x, but instead of x, we're going to write h minus y plus density 2 times x. And we're going to do the same thing as we did with the first equation. We're going to move the h's to one side, all the y's to the other side. So we have h times density of the object on the left side, and then when we multiply this times h, we get, and we move it across, we get minus density 1 equals, and on the right side, we end up with x times density 2, which is positive, and, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, I made a mistake. Here, I have density 2 times y, not density 2 times x. This should be a y, not an x. All right, that's better. So we're going to factor out a y, not an x. So factor out a y, and then density 1 times y times a negative, that would be minus density 1. That's better. All right, make sure I did this correctly. That's correct. This here, density 1 times h minus y, that's correct. And density 2 times y. All right, I'm back on track. Now solving this for y, we can say that y is equal to h times, in the numerator, we have the density of the object minus density 1 divided by density 2 minus density 1. And notice those are the two equations that we need to find the portion of the object that's inside layer 1 and the portion of the object that's inside layer 2. And that's how it's done.